The evacuation of the Avzostal steelworks in Mariupol continues. Ukrainian officials say they're doing everything possible and impossible to save the remaining fighters. The prosecutor at the International Criminal Court in The Hague says his office has dispatched 42 personnel, including forensic experts, to investigate suspected war crimes in Ukraine. Karim Khan said it was the biggest field deployment yet undertaken by his office. Officials in Ukraine say they are doing everything possible and impossible to try to save those remaining fighters who are trapped in Mariupol's Avovstal steelworks. Soldiers evacuated over the last two days have been taken to a detention facility in Russian-controlled territory. Ukraine has urged Moscow to exchange them for Russian prisoners. Meanwhile, the prosecutor at the International Criminal Court has sent its biggest ever team to try to investigate alleged war crimes in Ukraine. Uh, we can go live now to our correspondent James Waterhouse, who's in Kyiv for us. And James, you've been out and about yourself uh, hearing some of these very upsetting, harrowing stories. That's right, John. I think it's going to be some time before all of the horrors of this war are completely uncovered. Mariupol is a significant moment in the sense that it looks like the fighting has stopped. There are still hundreds of um, national defence volunteers, police officers, marines and soldiers still there waiting to see what is going to happy, uh, happen to them. President Zelensky has said the negotiations are going to take time and they are delicate. That could involve a prisoner of war exchange. Uh, but the hundreds who have been evacuated so far, some of whom who are seriously injured, have gone to Russian-controlled territory. President Putin has said they'll be treated according to international laws. But Russian MPs have already put forward plans to treat some of them as war criminals, which would make any kind of prisoner swap difficult. But the level of that resistance has sizably contributed to Russia's faltering campaign, a campaign it still calls its special military operation. Here in Kiev, the war crimes trial of a Russian soldier will continue. He's accused of shooting dead a civilian. And we have been to numerous towns around here, towns that have been in, at the heart of the fighting. One place is Borodyanka, heavily shelled, uh, in a war where citizens have continually been targeted, and we've been to meet one man. The story of Ukraine's war isn't over, but so many lives are. There is nothing here that resembles Ivan's home. Then you look closer and realize it's not just rubble. With extraordinary composure and detail, Ivan shows me what he's lost. We found my mother dead on a fridge here, and then we kept searching. 200 meters away, he found his brother next to his dog. Then he found his grandmother covered in bricks. Then his one-year-old daughter on a sofa, still breathing. Then his wife. Then his father. It was a horror, very scary and hard to understand. You hope that someone was still alive, hiding in a basement. All he's left with are memories and pictures. Polina died the same day. Ivan lost six of his family. This is the police station where Ivan was working when his home was hit. Now, Ivan isn't interested in justice. In his words, he wants the Russians who carried out that attack to die inside Ukraine, to send a message. But the police force he works for says it is working towards holding those Russians to account. But that is a long way off if it happens at all. Today, Ivan has a new police station to go to and is also being recognized by the head of Ukraine's National Police. We will remember the heroism and also the grief of our people. The most important thing is that police will be close to people and they will know where to come for help. Ivan is given an award for courage. He helped people escape after the Russians moved in, even after losing everything.
родичі переживають, плачуть, це все. My relatives are upset, crying, especially when we go to a cemetery and see six graves there. Every time you go there, you cry. Отак. Ivan's life has changed forever. So has his country. When you walk around towns like Borodjanka, you realize that it will take years for these societies, for these communities to rebuild. This morning, his police force say they have found at least 200 bodies in that town alone. This will be happening across the country as the fighting continues in the east and this war carries on. Both sides admit that peace talks are on hold. There is no dialogue at this moment in time. And this war will continue and Ukraine will bear the brunt.